Hello and welcome back to another certified auto session video. We are in the forest of Skinwalkerhausen. <laughs> so we're in the Appalachians, which is a mountain range somewhere on the east coast of America, which means we just flew back from LA from our last adventure to start a new adventure. And this adventure is going to be the reason why we actually came to the US. Trees, mountains, Berg. <laughs> animals and skinwalkers. This and is what the Appalachians are known for. <laughs> Mothman. Mothman. <laughs> and many other mythical creatures. What you probably don't know is that the Appalachians are home to one of the greatest cars in the world. And we're gonna buy exactly one of those in today's video. I'm 100% sure none of you guys is gonna guess what it is. I think this is the perfect spot to buy one of those. I think we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna also explore the area a little bit because I kind of like the vibe here. Like we are very far from civilization right now. We hiked here for like four hours or something. Something like that, yeah. my feet are hurting. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, we nearly didn't make it here. We actually missed our first flight because of whatever happened in the last video. And we nearly missed our second flight because Mr. Gabriel... Now I promise I will stand up. I will, I promise he you. He was a bit tired in the morning, so I had to go wake him up, which I think he's still scared to his bones because he hasn't been ever right since I woke him up. just crossed the border between North Carolina and yeah. Virginia and we have to drive through all of Virginia to get to West Virginia Show me you Show me you It's just in there Show me you Show me you wie gesagt Wait this Ja Mucken Aber die Mucke sind Wow Ich glaube das heißt Skinwalk Ich sehe wieder hier Alter Ist weg Glaube ich nicht Warte Du erzähl mal was Ja ich seh's nicht Du we're gonna hike back all the way three hours to our car to start this amazing adventure which is gonna be a milestone in sheepman history have i told you that this is gonna probably be my future drift car this is gonna be the first ever drift car that we probably built aside from eddie but eddie doesn't really count because eddie is pretty much falling apart so okay. this is Huh? This is a, it is a half-time drift car. Yeah, it is a, a Gelegenheitsauto. Yeah. Oder gelegentlich immer laufen. A, a Sonntagsdriftauto. <laughs> das ist eine gescheit anstrengende, dreistündige Wanderei gewesen. So, ich liege schon drin. Wo wart's jetzt? Ich hab rund gewart. Du bist oben gewesen bei uns gerade. Nein, ich hab rund gewart. Das ist ein leichtes Auto. Next day, sorry, we just went straight to sleep yesterday. We couldn't contain the excitement. We are here in the heartland of West Virginia right now. This is Huntington. Pretty much, I think the biggest city here in West Virginia because we could not really find any other hotels in the area. So today we're gonna start a mission to hunt the monsters of the Appalachians. And yeah, we're basically gonna go pick up the car. We're gonna have to see how we get to the car. The guy drove it down to some dealership to have some stuff done to it. So we're gonna meet him there and then we have to drive this car out of this region, do some sightseeing, drive it down to Sean, I think. Uh, we're gonna probably test it out on the way, I guess. I honestly don't really know what we're gonna do. Finding this car was so incredibly hard because it's such a rare car and especially in the spec that I wanted. So this is the reason why we came here in the first place. I could have literally bought it probably anywhere else in the world, but this is the only one I could find here in West Virginia find the right one. Um, I already put the payment down so it is pretty much already mine so we have a pretty long journey ahead of us and uh, yeah I honestly don't know how it's gonna go because I have never driven something like this in my entire life before but yeah enough talking cable is ready money is ready this is monster hunters see you guys in a bit <laughs> Basically, we found what we we're looking for right here. Uh, it is behind Manuel. And we also found the previous owner. <laughs> and he's gonna <laughs> explain the car really quick to me. So we kind of understand what's going on because we have, I, I think I told you already, but we have like yeah. zero knowledge about the cars. 
Well, Gabriel looked at some YouTube videos yesterday, but I don't know if it's <laughs> gonna be very. So what is it? So exactly. yeah, at this point, we have to pause the video really quick. We wanted to film a different kind of intro for the car. But as you can see later on in the video, it all went downhill very, very quickly. So this is my 1970s pointy Formula 400. To me, this is honestly one of the most beautiful cars ever built, especially with the Trans M body kit, which mine sadly doesn't have yet, but this can be changed very, very quickly. I literally looked for six months to find a white 1970s Firebird until I found this one. I immediately sent a deposit so the car is reserved for me. Honestly, not quite cheap, and at the same time, I was so happy when I finally found it. It has a 400 cubic inch V8 engine and a three-speed manual transmission. And the best part, it's completely original. Everything that happened afterwards really, really hurt me. and. It honestly got to a point where I literally thought about flying back home to Europe. But yeah, you will see in a second, I guess. Okay, what you're looking at is a 1970 Pontiac Firebird Formula 400. It's an all original car. Uh, the only thing that's not original is the paint. It was repainted and it has an aftermarket Flowmaster style exhaust. It's not the original exhaust, which I would replace immediately. It sits like this far off the ground. <laughs> it is a one owner car before I bought it. It was bought brand new in Georgia in 1970. The gentleman owned it up until the day he passed away. His wife inherited it. Okay. And it has literally been in a garage for about eight years. Eight years. And okay. they, they never drove it. So mm -hmm. they got it back on the road and decided to sell it. I drove down to Georgia, looked at it, yeah. left the deposit, and then came back a week later and drug it home. It's a great car. I've not driven it very much. It's really been in storage. Where you're gonna take me to pick up my car, other car, mm -hmm. it sat in that building for a year. I may have driven it a hundred miles and I don't know what else to tell you. It's just an all original, unmolested car. So I wanted to explain a few things about it because like you said, you know, you're not too familiar with these older cars. Before I open the hood, I'll go front to back the things that you should be aware of. Yeah. The first thing you should do is buy a fire extinguisher. <laughs> That's a, what, what? I am not kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's an old car. Yeah. yeah. Now it does have a brand new sending unit on it in the gas tank mm -hmm. and it has a brand new fuel filter on it. I would probably buy a set of spark plug wires and a distributor wire yeah. just in case because mm -hmm. those wires are probably about 15 years old. What else would I give? U-joints. When I had the transmission out, I wanted to service the U-joints. When I pulled the U-joints out, it's needle bearings. Mm -hmm. Two of them were missing. It still works. It drives fine, doesn't vibrate, mm -hmm. but I just want to be fair and honest with you so you know what to be prepared for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I drove it at 75 miles an hour yesterday, no vibration other than the tires because the tires are old. Mm -hmm. uh, I would put new tires on first chance you get, but uh, what else? All the squeaks and rattles were built into it brand new in 1970. <laughs> General Motors, <laughs> American cars in general from the early, the 60s and the 70s, squeak and rattle. That's just the way they are. I showed you the pictures of the floors. They're not terrible. Yeah, it's uh, been rusty. But I left there. the seat out so in case you wanted to see it for yourself in person. Mm -hmm. And I told you about the trunk pan's been replaced, but it's not welded in. It's mm -hmm. glued in. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Yeah. As if you can me. It's not Never been full with, no headers, no aftermarket intake yeah, yeah. on it. It's just original. Um, it does have a replacement carburetor on it, but it's the correct carburetor. I checked the VIN number on the transmission. It is the born with transmission. Nice. I checked the code on the block here. It is the correct code for this car. So that's the original engine. It is manual brakes, manual steering, mm -hmm. manual transmission. So are you familiar with tractors? It I know what a tractor is, but have I you driven a tractor? <laughs> Not yet. Manuel Gabriel? Yeah. yeah, I drove one. That's what it drives like. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rust on the car anywhere except for where I already told you about. Yeah. But I did notice something when I had it on the lift, so I want to show that to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you about this right here, a little bubbling right there. Oh yeah. Okay. On this side, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. But if you reach your hand on the inside right here, I think there's some bondo there. So there might have been a small repair when it was repainted. Okay. You feel yeah. that? Yeah. All right, so I just wanted you to be aware of that because yeah, sure. I'm not a dishonest person. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The pins. Oh, the door. the door. They're wore out. Okay. Yeah. But you can close it like that and it'll close. Um, the mirrors wobble and all that stuff. 
I've not done anything to the car other than the transmission work that I told you about. Uh -huh. uh, check the oil, it's full. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I would probably do the oil just in case. Yeah, just in case. Uh, what type of oil? 5W? You have to look in the owner's manual. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Oh, der läuft ja butterweich. Spannend, die werden die Koffer. Ja. Aber die, die Rücksitzbank taugt mir bis jetzt schon mehr. Das schaut nicht so aus, als würde ich irgendwie gut werden. Er hat sich ausgebaut zum Zwang, dass er nicht so rustig ist. Er fragt sich auch, und uh, was habt ihr vor, dass es mit dem Auto macht? Uh, honestly, we just want to ship it back to Europe to drive it like this. Ja, die Sau liegt auch. First drive for money, second drive for me. Just pick this car up. I sit on a potato bag. <laughs> Alter, this is so scared. This is nothing like I've ever driven before in my entire it's life. It's the complete opposite. It is the complete opposite. <laughs> First gear. Second gear. Third gear and that's it. You don't have more than What? three gears. What? Only for three, three gears? gears. Rev match for downshifting. This yeah. is a steering wheel. Almost around quite a bit. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, I really have to concentrate while driving this car because you have no power steering, you have no power brakes, you have no synchros in the gears as well. This is the most insane thing I've ever driven. This car has been sitting in the garage for like the last 10 to 15 years probably, he told us. Which means it's also not set up right. Uh, it has a carburetor, so we would need carburetor tuning. Because if I step on the gas fully, but the wheels are spinning, it, it moves and it spins <laughs> the wheels, but it kind of is a little sloppish, so yeah. it kind of have a clumsy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So the car itself. <laughs> direct so we kind of have to figure out a way how to get this more a bit more direct because this is supposed to be at one point my drift car uh, we have to change a lot of stuff for that but to me personally the body of this car is one of the most beautiful things ever created it is missing the transom spoiler and the transom spoiler in the front and the transom spoiler in the front and the transom spoiler in the rear uh, but once we have everything set up this car is has the ability to be one of the greatest cars in my opinion we're gonna go get fuel up the car really quick and then we're gonna go to AutoZone to buy some stuff for it because you saw it, he told us we need a fire extinguisher and some cables. What do you say? This is all of this ultimate mode. And you ask yourself, hey, where is the tank? This is all so cool. Oh, baby. Uh, yeah. This is honestly surreal. I wanted to have a 1970s Firebird for such a long time and now we came to West Virginia and I'm finally driving my 1970s Firebird. I know for many of you European people are gonna be like, why the fuck did you buy that? But let me tell you, to me, this is one of the most beautiful body forms a car ever has. It is missing the Trans Am Sporter, which goes here on the back and the one that goes here in the front. That makes the car like 10 times better. And I always wanted to have a muscle car. This is gonna be a vibe, shipping back to Europe and just driving around on the streets. But we're gonna try to make it handle very well. We already have some ideas for that. Suspension set up in the front and in the rear. And obviously it's gonna get a pretty cool engine. So yeah, but I, I like that it has patina because I don't know, you see all the years and all the stuff this car has been through. Can you see the car in the car? I'm not going to go Yes, that's forwards. Nice car, man. Thank you. You too. Wie oft glaubst du es zu danken? Ich kann es nicht sagen. Ich bete mit dir 100 Mal. Ja, yeah, we just bought it. You did? Yeah, we just picked What it up year? here. 
1970s. We came all the way from Europe to pick it up here in West Virginia. Oh, yeah. You're from Europe? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've been looking for this for a very, very long time. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get those in Europe, so it was a dream for a very long time to get it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got it. Thank you very much, man. No, I've got one you don't see very often at all. What do you have? I've got a 1960 Rambler. Rambler? That's a... What engine does it have? It's got a six-cylinder in it. A six-cylinder? It's been uh, overhauled, bored out 60 over. 60 over? It runs good. Take it for a spin with mine. <laughs> <laughs> it never run with that. <laughs> that sounds good. It sounds, it sounds pretty good, yeah. Have a good day, man. Hey. Good luck with your Rambler. I like your car. Thank you very much, man. Also wenn wir einen Unfall bauen, dann haben wir einfach gleich ins Gelebt. Bredleben. Ich hoffe, das ist gar fies. Weiter fahren jetzt so. Nein, bist du zuerst? So bist du ganz vorn. Ja, wir rasten rein. Okay, ich kann auch mal rasten. Ja, jetzt ist es nicht dazu. Jetzt sind. Ja, jetzt haben wir so ein bisschen durchgestrickt. Okay, next stop, Autozone. Previous owner in this video. Fängt. Fertig. <laughs> All right, it's not the best looking auto zone, but it will do its job, I guess. I think it fits to the car. Wow, it's excellent. Wow, so the green and The good thing about auto zone is that they should have pretty much everything for this engine. Schlechtes Netz. Okay, der schaut schon geil aus. Dann müssen wir den Vergaser noch hier stehen. Schon? Sure. Ja. Jetzt sollen wir mitnehmen. Und wir sind jetzt gerade 10 Minuten gefahren und jetzt wirst du das Auto schon bauen. Das ist ja voll geil. Fangen wir mal ein Stück rein, dass wir alles geht werden und dann bauen wir noch. Oh, da ist der Sticker geil. Ihr wisst ja, wie man einen Vergaser einstellt. Sicher. Ein Vergaser einstellt? Ja. Bei was? Verhofft. <lacht> so ein Scheiß. Ja. Wo? Und zugeschaut haben wir. Auf YouTube. Nein, echt? So, was soll ich machen? Okay, so the most important part is in the car, which is apparently the fire extinguisher. All right, let's go to the second outer zone to get the cables, and then we should be ready for our trip. But flick on the other one, listen. So the starter sometimes when the engine is warm, the starter doesn't want to start, which we have right now. So have to push the car. Mama, forward. <laughs> That's a bit annoying, I have to say, but whatever. Rechts abbiegen auf 15th Street West, dann links abbiegen auf Madison Avenue. Schnurrt wie ein Kätzchen! Let's see if they have what we need. I think the Wart Ningel geil in Pontiac. Was Tippi? Findest du nicht? Ja, das ist vorhin die auch noch. Ich finde es schon cool. Ah, Drohnen sind richtig nice. Also, wo ist die Tür zu kaufen? Ja, das passt doch gut. <lacht> 1970s. What's that? 1970. 1970? Oh, yeah, yeah I knew it was an older one. Yeah. It's got the classic bumpers on it. Thank you very much. Have a yeah. good day. You too. Thanks, dude. Hey, eben, Dr. Möchtest du dich drauf picken? Wo bist du drauf? Oder du? Ah, ja, fix, ja. Yeah. <laughs> so, after this, we started our trip into West Virginia. We went deeper and deeper into the mountains and forests of Appalachia, which is, like I already said, the oldest forest in the world. It stretches from Georgia all the way over to the north of the USA, with huge areas not being 100% discovered yet. It truly was a rural and wild place, but honestly it was very beautiful to see and I've always wanted to come here, so for me it was magical. I hope you understand me, but this is just one wild thing to drive. I don't think I've ever driven something similar in my entire life before, but I really have to say, I'm a big fan of it. I, I really love it. This is so much fun to drive, but at the same time, it is very, very terrifying because obviously you have 
no safety whatsoever in this car. So if you crash, I'm like 90% certain that you're gonna probably die. But other than that, I really like how this car looks. I've said it a million times. I like the interior of it. This feels so nice to shift. So I definitely wanna keep something similar to this here. It's really, really hard to explain how this car handles and how it drives. You would probably need to just get sit in and drive it around. If you've ever driven something really, really old, you, you will feel, you know what I say. If you have never driven something similar to this, the best way to describe it is you're basically sitting on a couch with a huge V8 and four wheels. That's pretty much it, because it is so wonky. You see the whole car just wobbles around when you're driving. It feels like you're driving with a 200 ping, because everything is just kind of offset. Uh, you give it a steering input and the car does it like two seconds later, which is pretty cool, very nice to, to, to cruise around. And it's not so cool if you want to drive it sporty which we'll, we'll find out later how sport it really drives. The good thing is it has a pretty big engine, so it is a V8, which means, oh my God. Uh, it needs to be set up properly, but if you set it up properly, it actually moves quite a lot. It is pretty fast. I have to concentrate so hard while driving this thing. Oh my god. This is scary to drive, to say the least. I always wanted to drive something like this and I always wanted to have something like this. And now doing this here in West Virginia, in the middle of literally nowhere, it really feels insane. But it's so cool here. It really feels like you're in some hillbilly movie, like the hills have eyes or something like that. We have to drive this thing halfway across America. This is gonna be a, quite a trip, I would say. I really don't understand how the people live here. It's, we're so far away from everything else and there's still houses and everything. Like the closest Walmart is around two hours from where we are right now. This area, by the way, it used to be very well known for coal mining. And in the 80s, I think, they pretty much shut down most of the coal mines. So you have pretty, you have quite many cities that are abandoned here in this area. And you have very, very poor neighborhoods as well, which is honestly very interesting. You also have many mines in this area uh, that you can still explore. Abandoned mines, obviously. But yeah, I like it. I honestly like it. Not only the car, but also the area that we are at right now. Oh my God, this is a sharp turn. Oh, <laughs> The seats give you no support whatsoever, so you're basically just falling around in the whole car when you're turning. Oh my god, look at those old barns. This is so nice. <laughs> Living here must be so peaceful. I really, really hope we don't break down here because this is gonna be a pain in the ass. Luckily, we still have the rental car with us. Look how nice it is. This is insane. Let's just chill here really quick. I want to take some pictures here. Wie schaut's aus, Freund? Vorne ist es saugeil, aber hinten schaut aus wie ein Opi oder so. Der Dactyl, der Dactyl von Transam ja. fehlt halt noch. Aber Alter, das ist so sketchy da vorne. <lacht> Durch die Kurven, da haut sich jemand immer rum. Unglaublich. I wish we had more time to explore and to maybe camp here or something. But we have to get back and we have to push out the car again because it died, so. <laughs> uh, we know we have issues with the starter. It's not starting when the car is warm, but we just tried jump starting it. As you can see here on these tire marks. 
but yeah, it's not really starting right now. So, here is not my nets, just making us sharp. Sagt the starter man. The Kabel sits in between motor and starter. Ah, oh, perfect. Deswegen Na, vielleicht sind es Kometen, deswegen tut sich gar nichts mehr. Also keine Ahnung, ob es Kometen sind, die, die Masse ist auf jeden Fall da. Aber muss ich probieren mal. Probier nochmal, aber bleib bitte auf der Bremse stehen. Was ist das? Wackelkontakt bei der Kavi. Ich gebe kein Gas. We're back, baby. Yeah, boy. So the reason why I always wanted a Pontiac Firebird basically is because of Smokey and the Bandit. If you've never watched this movie, please give this movie a go. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest movies ever created. And they drove a Pontic Firebird in this movie. I know it was a newer one, but to me, these are the most beautiful Firebirds. So that's the reason why I got this one here. Yeah, Marty is back with me. He got the one to the next one. Or his sister. He was not. Or his sister. Huh? <laughs> this is so dumb. This why it's shadow negative. Peace to that well. If you own a firebird, now you know not to let off the gas when you are yes, this is not normal. Nah, but the cool guy in the drift in it. Yeah, this is practice. We feel this by far. Sehr unsicher. Merkst du mein Freund? Uh yeah, when you wish. Yeah, passt. Bin ich gespannt. Ich bin auch gespannt. Perfekt. Ich hoffe, er springt wieder an. Jawohl! Jawohl, Gaspuppe! Oh, da ist bei Paris das noch geschießen. Ne? Schlecht ist nicht! <lacht> Was sagst du? Alter! Es wurscht wie ein Traktor und der LKW gemischt. It already very much feels like a death trap, but I think in the wet it would be even worse. Especially with this huge engine brake that we just noticed on a dry road, you know? Irgendwas knockt. Hänger versteht du? Ja, irgendwas. Ich glaube, der Ventilator vorne vielleicht. Oder sollen wir Öl einmal checken? Hallo, ja. Hallo, Glaubst du, da steckt was? Die Motor? Ja, weil wenn du vom Gas aber gehst, bremst du. Einer von den Zylindern. Aber es kommt genau da aus, dem, ja. aus, aus der Linken. Da. Da circa ein zweiter Zylinder. Ja, aber jetzt. Alter, what the fuck. Ja, ich hab jetzt genau auf der Linksseite. Ich hab ganz nicht überlegt, im Auto drin und was ist, wenn du vom Gas runtergehst, was verhindert dann, dass die, die Rauen hinten dran? Das ist das Einzige, was mir eingefallen ist, Kurven oder Noppen dann. Ja. Oder Ventile stehen wir mit Kurven zusammen. Alter, die Sau ist so heiß, ich hab mich jetzt auch verbrennt. Weil es also einfach ultra heiß geworden ist, wenn wir gerade Temperaturen haben. Nein, das kann ich mir nicht vorstellen. Ich glaube echt, dass. Dass ihr Leiche gekauft habt mal wieder. Öl haben wir. Wie passt. Das einzige Gute ist, dass man die Motoren überall kriegt in Amerika. Ja, Zeit für einen Engine-Swap, oder? Perfekt. 
Weiter geht der Flug. Das ist, der, das ist der Rekord im Motor, Motor zu stellen. Wie lange sind wir jetzt vor einer Stunde? In drei Wochen der zweite Motor, oder? Äh, ah ja, das ist auch. Okay, we're gonna try to drive this car now on the road until we come across maybe some shop or something. Uh, there were a few back there, but that's also like 30 minutes ago. So we just hope that this road sometimes is going to lead us to civilization. We at least need some tools to just get the valve cover off the engine. That would help a lot already. What kind of luck do I have? That's insane. That is... Which is good, I guess. A little shape on us now, but it's already better than Skinwalker. The Finken on the Straße. Stay mitten on the Straße. Let's go quick. Okay. Good day. Hey, ohne Scheiß. Probier nochmal starten, wie ich weg aus der Gegend. Das ist mal sehr suspekt. Der versteht mir genau, was ich sag. Ja? Bissl. Ich glaube, dass die Unterfalle waren für uns. Ich glaube, dass das alles eine Falle ist und wir sind gerade bei Ron Turn. Ja, Ron. Es fühlt sich wirklich an wie bei Ron Turn. So, let's pause the video here really quick and I have to explain something to you because I didn't properly say it on video. We were stranded in the middle of nowhere, which in Appalachia is literally in the middle of nowhere. There were no houses, nothing close to us and we had literally no phone signal, so we couldn't call for help or anything else. I let Gabriel drive the car because he was our mechanic and I felt that he knew best what to do. We only drove for a few minutes until this happened. Also, Hast du den noch mal auch erinnern, was das ist? Ja, also Fetzen, oder? Ja. Ja, pass auf. Ja. Jetzt spuckt er noch was aus. Da ist wenigstens ein schattiger Platz. Aber jetzt oder gerade auch? Jetzt ist er. Ich glaube, der hat jetzt die Kurve gefressen. Jetzt ist er komplett Fetzen, ich hab's schon gehört. Hast du's gehört? Voll Gas. Weißt du, was das ist? Der, 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 der Dings, der hat den Kipphebe und drunter ist die Feder. Ja. Und ich glaube, dass er am Anfang die Feder gerissen ist. Ja. Und das, deswegen hat er dann im Leerlauf, ist er nicht getrennt, aber wenn es da gegangen bis zum Gas oder so, halt geflattert und die Feder ins Lager drückt. Und der ist immer auf Ausschlag rausgefahren und hat den Widerstand gehabt. Das befühlt mich. Und was befühlt das jetzt? Das ist der Mutter. Also jetzt sind wir... Ja, vielleicht haben wir jetzt wenigstens ein Netz. Nein, Nein. noch kein Skip. Zum Glück haben wir keinen Vergaserkraft. Shisha. <lacht> Zieh mal. Jetzt ist der Gap sein. <laughs> I paid a lot of money for this car. Yeah. Because it has the original engine inside. Really quickly, I want to say that the previous owner, Christopher, really had nothing to do with this and it was not his fault or anything. In case you think he ripped us off or anything, I can assure you he did not. It's just an old car, it was sitting for a long time and you know, it happens with old cars. It still sucks, but in part two of the video you will see how crazy this adventure really gets and this was only the tip of the iceberg. To this date, this was one of the most extreme adventures I've ever lived through. So I see you guys again in the second part. I hope you have a wonderful day. This will get even crazier.